and not being able to make artwork, it's very depressing. Whenever I can't make work, I get really, really down. For me, it's a way of um, doing life. I you know, it's, it's in, at this point inextricable from my way of thinking. No matter what we're going through, no matter how bad times are, you know, and I can pick up my guitar, and no matter what my day would bring, it would drive my blues away. I love music. I love to perform and I love to sit on stage and I love to play with an audience. I can remember back when I was at the age of five years old. I was uh, visiting my father, Carrie, Carrie Bell, on the west side of Chicago at his house. He had a band rehearsing there and I felt the music, you know, it, it, it made my it made my feet pack. You know, I felt like, man, I wish I was doing that. When I looked at the band rehearsing, at that moment, I said, this is what I want to do too. I want to play music just like uh, my dad is playing. It's like my father knew that I was going to get involved with it. So he didn't say nothing to me. He would look over me. He would look at me every now and then, and he would smile, and, you know, I said to myself, yeah, this is, this is it. What I want to give to the people out here that sees my performance is what I am feeling emotionally at that particular time. When somebody else is feeling my music like I'm feeling it, I think it's a blessing. To me, God is looking down on me saying that guy is doing something amazing for people. I started in music when I was in junior high school. They did testing in the sixth grade to see what sorts of aptitudes we had for special classes. When I went to the music class, I was told that the class was too large and that I would have to wait a year, and I was pretty upset. Teacher happened to receive a phone call. I just waited outside the room. When he went to get the phone call in the office, I, um, I went into the room and added my name to the roll book. When I conduct a concert, I would like people to relate not just to the music and to the performance venue, but hopefully to something that's part of their personal experience. I like to combine works that are unusual and combine works that are new and challenging, not just for the musicians, but for the audience. So I include in part of my world experience doing things that are not musically motivated. And I try to make a trip every year to some place that is going to give me a different kind of knowledge and appreciation of what we have on this planet called Earth. When I conduct a concert of Indian music, I now can relate it to having heard Indian music in India. I've also heard Indian music in South Africa, which has the largest Indian population outside of India. The same basic people, the same basic culture they're vastly different in how they have evolved. I want people to go away feeling excited about their lives. I want them to feel that they've had an experience that's not just been for, for their ears, but also for their soul, for their mind. That's what I think a concert should do for people. They should go away and feel that there's some relevance to their lives 
and some relevance to the world around them. You live around here? Ah, uh, yeah. When I moved to Chicago, I didn't find um, Latinas in, for my play that bi were bilingual uh, for my play, and uh, with, in a city with a population of a quarter of the population being Latino, that was ridiculous. So I was like, I have to start something. Teatro Luna is Chicago's all Latina theater company. We were founded in 2000, so we're nine years old. We're about to um, be 10. Oh, thank God. We're, thank God we've lasted. Well, it sounds like that. A lot of times I watch theater and I, I ask myself, who's that for? I'm this kind of immigrant, but I also know these kinds of immigrants and I know uh, Mexicans of this coloring and of this background. I know a uh, big Jewish Mexican community. It's not complicated, the image of us here. Hybridity makes this nation, but it's not revered. It's not respected. Teatrona became this place that the Cuban American, the Dominican American, the Peruvian, uh, Puerto Rican had similar um, experiences where they were lacking, you know, a representation. The complicated image of Mexican women, I think, is the, without standing on the soapbox, is really important to me. In some Latin American circles, it's like an actress is kind of synonymous with prostitute, you know, because it's the mujeres alegres, you know, of happy women, you know, that portray themselves. Um, so some of them came later in life, but they're the raw talent and great work ethic. So they're willing to do whatever. We create theater from autobiographical experiences and family histories. If you would look at the stories, oh, I'm gonna start crying. Uh, the stories that, that we tell about, about our abortions, they're about um, in our community, you know, about our size, about being molested or raped structurally, stylistically, they're, they're not fancy. They just have to be told. They have to be told. James Joyce talked about two different kinds of art, static and kinetic. And I, I, I hope mine is both. <laughs> I hope it freezes for a second, that it's arresting in, in its unconsciousness and playfulness, and, that it, it, and then that it moves people to maybe take some risks, you know. I'm the artistic director of the Gift Theater Company. And we wanted to one day have a theater um, in a neighborhood, much like the ones we grew up in, that was as we say, culturally rich, but artistically sparse. The gift comes from a quote by Jerzy Grotowski, who was a Polish theater um, director. And he says, uh, acting is a particularly thankless art. It dies with the actor. And then he goes on to say, the actor in the special process of discipline and self-penetration and self-molding is not afraid to go beyond all normally acceptable limits. The actor makes a total gift of himself. To me, it just kind of keeps our eye on the ball a little bit, that it's not about the reviews, it's not about the awards, it's, a, it's, it's hopefully about something bigger. And what do you say? I'm here, aren't I? With you, aren't I? Two near-death experiences at 24 will do wonders to crystallize what's important. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to get back on stage. I knew that I wanted to direct, I wanted to act. It was something worth fighting for. There's not a day that goes by that I don't have to combat some sort of fear, whether it was fear of getting sick again or fear of you know how to be independent again or getting on stage in a wheelchair, you know, and, and how, uh, I guess, audacious it is <laughs> to, to, to do a role where it's never referenced and to, to force people to simply accept. I believe that what I do, whether it's directing or acting or teaching, is trying to, <laughs> trying to spread some love around. Whether it's sharing my heart as the character or directing an actor uh, in a role that I know that they're scared of or in a venue in which is perhaps terrifying to them, you know. I feel that all I really do is do love stories. They just the context of them is different. They may not look like it, you know, to the outside, but that's at least what I hook into. 
And that's a much stronger reason to go to work every night. What is it about our relationship with materials that helps to define us? Is there a kind of ethic involved in our relationship to materials? Is there something that we can learn about ourselves through these poetic transformations? What happened as soon as I started investigating art with a capital A um, was that I, I recognized um, what an affinity I had for those types of questions. I grew up in a, in a small town, small farm town actually, grew up on a dairy farm in northern Wisconsin, and um, very small community, something like 400 people, and so there was um, a certain kind of focus on the um, utility of things. At a certain point in an object's life, it is often um, either the utility has been used up or it has broken, it has changed in some way. And it is at that transformative moment that it goes from having a really specific definition or identity to having this kind of g being part of this general category which is uh, often referred to as waste. Part of the reason that I think that we have some of the um, environmental problems that we have in terms of material surplus and waste is because we, we have lost the imagination. I work part of an artist group called Material Exchange. We're really interested in that opening moment, this, this potential for a thing to uh, change its identity. Usually in, in our case the material uh, is the sort of heart of the project. I think for the most part our general questions are surrounding the basic question of ontology, of being. Making art has always been something I've been interested in. I've always drawn, I've always uh, sculpted, uh, taken photographs. But I mean, due to my size, my parents always wanted me to be a football player, basketball player, and make sure I was in every every type of sporting event possible. Um, which I was terrible at everything. Just absolutely terrible. And this is like the only thing I was good at was making art work. It's the only thing that I would win awards at. It was the only thing that I was interested in. Uh, and. I practically flunked out of school several times. It wasn't that I was a dumb kid, I just could care less about school. I like to tell stories about things that happen and that they don't always have a resolve, um, which can be, it can be hard to swallow and that's the reason why I believe I use color and um, popular culture images to help people digest that. This is how these, uh, these paintings all started. We're making smaller uh, drawings. These started probably in 2001, and I would do 40 to 20 a year. You can see Humpty Dumpty being used quite a bit, Snow White being used quite a bit, uh, snakes on a plane, topical humor. Um, I understand that that they're smaller and the colors and there's pop culture, so you're you're more inclined to come to it, you're more inclined to look at it, but once you're there, it's kind of a pie in the face that here's something that you weren't expecting. Basically, I, I hope people just examine and re-examine things around them. What I'd like to see happen more in the future and what I'm going to work very hard to do is to level the playing field insofar as not doing roles in which the disability is even a subplot. Ultimately, we all come from the same roots. We all come from melody. We all come from rhythm. We all come from harmony. We got something special here in the Latino community is really exciting. I think in the next 
eight years or so, you're gonna see the Latino theater movement like stemming from here now.